Assalamu alaikum and hello dear viewers. There have been various reasons and factors involved in the war. That's why states, they go to war. Historically, of course, many leaders, they wanted wars with other countries. So for the one reason or the other, they have fought wars. We will discuss on the diversionary theory of war today. Dear viewers, if you have not subscribed my channel so far, please do subscribe it. Press the bell icon to be informed with my new and trusting and informative video uploads. And please share this channel. What is diversionary theory of war? It is a concept in international relations, particularly in foreign policy, which talks about the leader's initiative towards war. When there is internal strife, domestic problems, political issues, economic challenges, and a leader is not able to control it and to resolve the problems, then he or she initiates war with another state. So when there is a tendency towards civil war, people, they go to streets, there is strike, there is inflation, and people, they are, if they are jobless, so any of the reasons, I mean, if there is internal strife in a country and the inability of the leader, it leads to war with another state. In most of the cases, this thing and concept has been used by the unpopular leaders. I mean the autocratic leaders, the dictators, the leaders who were not democratically elected. But even democracy is no exception. I mean, sometimes this concept has also been used by the leaders who were even democratically elected, like various presidents of the United States of America. So what is the purpose? Purpose is to divert the attention of the public from the internal issues, from the domestic problems, and to distract them and to divert them towards external conflict, maybe a full-fledged war with another state. The purposes are first, that the diversion of attention of the public from internal strife towards the external conflict. Second, that is that it also shows the tendency towards the perception of the leaders that leaders, they want to finish this internal strife and to have a homogeneous society, to have cohesion in the society. And also another purpose is that uh, a leader want to finish its unpopularity and change it into maybe a, a popularity. Leader also want to have strong grip on his power. Leader doesn't want to lose his or her power and a leader wants his or her political survival. Another purpose of this uh, diversion from the, and this distraction of the public from the domestic issues to the external conflict is to produce a sense of patriotism that, that is called the externalization of conflict that have the domestic issues and domestic strife, internal strife that has to be connected with the external conflict. So uh, it produces a sense of patriotism and maybe that sense of patriotism is a temporary one. Sometimes this concept has been used by the leaders within its own state against a religious minority or ethnic minority. There are so many examples, uh, mostly from the Asian and African countries that have it was used by a leader towards its own people, I mean ethnic or religious minority. There is quantitatively, historically, and empirically so many examples from the history which supports the concept 
of diversionary theory of war. But on the other hand, there is also criticism on this concept and there is also a literature and scholarship available which disprove this diversionary theory of war that sometimes even it backfires and sometimes even it accelerates the internal strife which leads towards the civil war and finally even to the disintegration of the state. Even Lenin, he said that in the European history uh, and particularly in the First World War, leaders, they were unpopular. There was a strong opposition to them. There were economic and political issues and problems. The leaders, they were not able to solve them and to listen to the demands of the common people, masses. So that's why First World War happened that leaders, they attacked on other countries, they invaded other states. And same is the situation with the Second World War that have Japan, Italy, Germany, Nazi Germany, and some other states, the excess powers, the, they had problems in their country, so they initiated even the Second World War. This diversion theory of war was used by leaders even before the First World War. It has been used in the Cold War and even after the Cold War in the post-Cold War era. There are so many writings and literature available produced by the Leninist Marxist scholars that have diversionary theory of war concept has been used by the unpopular and non-democratic autocratic rulers. We have some examples from the history that there was 100 years war in Europe. So in 1415, King Henry V of England, he invaded France because he had some political and economic challenges in England. He wanted to divert the public attention towards the externalization of the conflict. That's why people supported him in the name of patriotism and also to safeguard the frontiers and boundaries and sovereignty of England. That was the third phase of the 100 years war in Europe. Another example we have, that is the Russo-Japanese War of 1904. It is stated that the industrial workers in Russia, those who are demanding for their basic rights, for salaries, because there was inflation, their demands were not fulfilled. The king of Russia, who was called Tsar, so Tsar was not ready to listen to the demands of the industrial workers. Russia was going through an internal strife. Workers, common people, they were on strike. That's why one of the ministers of Tsar, he said that now a war is inevitable, not only to finish this internal strife in Russia, but also to have a sense of patriotism and also to have strong grip of power and not to lose this power by Tsar. So a war was launched by Russia with Japan in 1904 because Japan was expanding its influence. Japan had colonized. Japan was going to colonize uh, the peninsula of Korea and it was finally colonized in 1910. Then Japan was moving towards Manchuria the northeastern uh, provinces of China. So negotiations held on uh, Manchuria and Korean Peninsula, which were failed. And lastly, this war happened between the two countries. Actually, this war backfired. Half that in 1905, a revolution started in Russia, although it was uh, stopped, but later on, in 1917, another revolution, which is called Bolshevik Revolution, it opened way for communism in Russia, and also that was the uh, an end of the kingdom. I mean, the Tsarist Russia. So, Russia was declared as Soviet Union or USSR, Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics. 
Another example, we have the French Revolutionary Wars of 1792. Actually, uh, there was a new French assembly, which uh, replaced the French King Louis XVI. Uh, there was a new system, and of course, some problems uh, were arising in the French uh, society. So, uh, an attack was made on Austria. I mean, France invaded Austria just to unite the people in the name of patriotism. And this concept of diversionary theory of war was used. Another example, we have the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 and 71. The Prussian, I mean the German leader, Otto von Bismarck, he was consolidating his power. There were some problems in Prussia, I mean in Germany. So he wanted to uh, have a harmony and to create a homogeneous society in Germany. He wanted to unify Germany. That's why uh, he started war with France and then he established the German Empire after the siege of Paris. We have an example of Vietnam War in the Cold War period. In the Lyndon B. Johnson era, there were some social and political movements in the United States, especially started by the African Americans. Half they were demanding for their basic human rights. Half they were criticizing the U.S. government's discriminatory policies against the ethnic groups, I mean the African Americans. They were led by the Martin Luther King, who famously stated uh, his words in his seven minute speech that is called, My Dream, I Have a Dream. And uh, uh, of course, there were problems. That's why it is stated that Lyndon B. Johnson, uh, he started war in Vietnam. And then it was also on the public pressure that so many protest demonstrations held in the U.S. that he withdrew the U.S. forces from Vietnam. So uh, a concept was also became popular that is, that is called the credibility gap. And what is credibility gap? That when there is confusion between the actual position and the politician's statements, I mean the actual position is is far away from the statements of the politicians, how they tell lie to the public, especially uh, it is referred towards the Lyndon B. Johnson government in the US. So then this concept became popular. It was called the credibility gap that even leaders, they were not credible. They were not trustworthy. They were telling lie to the public, to the people. And I mean that it is one of the aspect of the diversionary theory of war that leaders, they do start wars with other states. We have example of the Gulf War, first Gulf War, 1919-91, started by uh, senior Bush when Saddam Hussein of Iraq invaded Kuwait. Then the U.S. responded uh, with uh, heavy weight. Uh, the U.S. made an alliance of its friendly countries. And uh, also George H.W. Bush, he started war against uh, Grenada. Uh, he wanted to have grip on power, but uh, it also backfired that even he did not re-elect for the second term and his presidency ended. We have also examples of Bill Clinton that have he uh, fired missiles on uh, Afghanistan uh, and have uh, he also had very, very uh, worst relationship with Libya. Actually, uh, it is stated that he also wanted to use this concept, diversionary theory of war. We have an example of Iraq war, which was there from 2003 to 2011. Have uh, the junior Bush, he wanted 
to satisfy the American public uh, and it was stated that there were weapons of mass destruction but later on even it was disproved and uh, the popularity of uh, Junior Bush uh, it uh, declined. Oh, Dove, he re-elected for the second term but after that his popularity declined and Barack Obama he became the US president. We have another example that is the Falkland Islands War that's also called Malvinas Islands War of 1982 that military janta of Argentina uh, invaded uh, the, these islands who were under the uh, control and from under the control of uh, Britain since 1830. So a war happened of course it was uh, a defeat for uh, Argentina and a great victory for uh, Britain. Th that time uh, Argentina was going th through internal strife, was going through domestic turmoil. People they were not happy with the policies of um, their leader. That is why the leader of Argentina started this war. So it is also diversionary theory of war. We have recent example that is the Russian annexation of Crimea. In 2014, it is stated that uh, uh, Russian people, they were criticizing the policies of President Vladimir Putin. So he invaded Crimea and he thus wanted to, uh, to be popular. So it is stated that then Vladimir Putin graph, it was rising in Russia after this annexation. Uh, dear viewers, it was today about the diversionary theory of war and international relations, particularly in foreign policy, that half uh, leaders, they use this concept to achieve their interest and also to make an end to the domestic problems and internal strife and to have a sense of maybe temporary patriotism uh, in the public. Keep watching and take care viewers.